السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وكفى وسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى لا سيما المصطفى صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا My dear viewers, welcome to another episode in the series of Best of the Best and today's hadith is concerning the best of people The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said in this hadith خير الناس أنفعهم الناس. The best of all people are those who are of most benefit to others. Those who benefit people most. Those who are most useful to others. Again, خير الناس أنفعهم للناس. As usual, when people hear the best of people, right away their mind will go to uh, those who are very excessive in worship, praying at night and fasting every day or every other day. All of that is great, you know, the benefits and the good deeds are one of two types. In Surah Al-Asr, the Almighty Allah said that all mankind are in loss. إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِي خُسْرِ إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ Except those who believed and did good righteous deeds. وَتَوَاصَوْ بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَاصَوْ بِالصَّبْرِ and they enjoin one another to the truth and enjoin one another to patience. So the good deeds are divided into two categories. Some good deeds for the benefit of your own self, such as praying, fasting, performing Hajj, reading Quran, you know, night prayer. And there are other good deeds which are to benefit others. We call its nafa and its benefit is not limited to the doer, but it benefits the doer and others. It benefits the doer as far as receiving the reward, good deeds. And it benefits others such as we can talk about literally countless benefits that a person can do to help others. You know, buy medication for somebody, assisting a blind person to cross the street, removing any hazards material from the path of people. And these practices or deeds are not like minor deeds. No. Before Allah the Almighty, they are actually great deeds. The Prophet ﷺ said, لا تحقرن من المعروف شيئا ولو أن تلقى أخاك بوجه طليق Never ever belittle any of the good deeds. Satan may make it seem fair to you I don't have to do this because, you know, people will, will think that I'm showing off or it will not be of any benefit to people. No, 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 no. Do not exclude any benefit that you can benefit people with. Any kind of help. Guess what? The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, even meeting people and smiling to them. This smile is kind of help, kind of benefit that you offer to people. They feel happy. They become optimistic. They feel that somebody is, you know, sharing with them glad tidings, good news. It makes their day, as they say. So, some of the deeds which are beneficial for others, the reward is greater because it does not only benefit the doer, it benefits others as well. And that's why the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, خَيْرُ النَّاسِ أَنْفَعُهُمْ لِلنَّاسِ The best of people before Allah are those who offer the most benefit to others, the most beneficial, the most useful people to others. Sometimes a person may not have anything to give and doesn't have an access to offer any service to people. By protecting them against the harm, befalling them, by interceding for them so that they can achieve their goal or target as long as it is legal and lawful, that is also a kind of help. Sometimes the Prophet ﷺ would receive people who are asking for donations or help. He doesn't have any. But he says, oh so and so, 
go to this person and ask him, tell him that the Prophet ﷺ sent me to you if you have anything to give me. So he goes. And uh, the other person has some surplus. Here, take this. So the Prophet ﷺ said, Because you guided somebody to something which is good for him or for others, you will be also a partner in their word. You will share their word. The greatest benefit that you can offer to people and help them with is being useful in the matters which will bring them closer to their creator, would guarantee them salvation on the day of judgment, which is a religious benefit. Teaching people how to come and draw close to Allah, guiding people to repentance, asking people to quit sins. That's why the Prophet ﷺ said, Allah blesses in the angels pray and all the creatures Pray for those who teach people goodness. In Allah wa malaikatahu wa ahlu samai wa ahlu al ard, hatta al namla fi juhriha wa hatta al hud, la yusalluna ala muallim al nas al khair. That is the greatest benefit ever. You know, when you buy food for somebody, it's a meal and it's gone. You'll be rewarded for that. Thank you so much. But imagine you taught somebody how to pray, you taught somebody how to recite Quran correctly. You taught somebody how to work and earn. So this is an extended benefit as well. Allah the Almighty said in Surah Al-Hajj, Ayah number 77, He commanded us to do what? Al-Good. Al-Khayr. What is good? Ifalu al khayra Do what is good. Any kind of goodness, any kind of kindness, any kind of service that you offer people or you offer to people. لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ In order to be successful. Then he said, while addressing his prophets in Surah Al-Anbiya in Ayah number 73, وَأَوْحَيْنَا إِلَيْهِمْ فِعْلَ الْخَيْرَاتِ He inspired his messengers and revealed to them to do the good deeds, to do what is good, what is helpful. In Surah Al-Nahl, he said, he commands the following, إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَأْمُرُ بِالْعَدْلِ well, Ihsan, verily Allah commands justice and Ihsan. What is Ihsan? To be good to everyone, to do good to those whom you know and those whom you do not know, even to cattle, even to animals. And guess what? وَمَا تَفْعَلُوا مِنْ خَيْرٍ Any good you do, it will not be neglected, it will not be forgotten. Allah the Almighty said, لِلَّذِينَ أَحْسَنُوا فِي هَذِهِ الدُّنْيَا حَسَنًا for those who did good in the life of this world, they will be rewarded with hasana. In another ayah, it is explained, لِلَّذِينَ أَحْسَنُوا الْحُسْنَى وَزِيَادَةً So the hasana, the good reward, or al-husna refers to paradise. And even Allah has more, which is the quality of getting to see Allah the Almighty in paradise. In أَحْسَنْتُمْ أَحْسَنْتُمْ لِأَنفُسِكُمْ Surah Al-Isra, ayah number 7. If you guys do good, this goodness is to benefit your own selves. كُلُّ مَعْرُوفٍ صَدَقَ Every kind deed is an act of charity from you upon yourself to benefit your own self. When Abu Dhar al-Ghifari رضي الله عنه heard from the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him that we should give that much charity every morning to give thanks for the blessings of the joints which enable us to move, to function, to get up, to stand up, to sit down, to lie down, to work. So the Prophet ﷺ listed some good deeds to do in order to match or give thanks for such blessing. So Abu Dhar al-Ghifari radiallahu anh said, Ya Rasulullah, what if I don't have anything to give in a charity? Well, I sell an amwal, we don't have any money. So the Prophet ﷺ said, this is not limited to giving any charity as far as cash. He said, تَعْزِلُ الشَّوْكَةَ عَنْ طَرِيقِ النَّاسِ You saw that there is some thorns or hazardous material on the path of people. You set it on a side. You remove it from the path of the people. This is sadaqa. A stone, a rock, a blind person is crossing the street and you help him out. This is an act of charity. Do you know that, brothers and sisters, that the Prophet ﷺ said there was a man who was walking and a branch fell from a tree. It cut the road off. It obstructed the path of people. So he said, let me remove it on the side of the road so that it will make it easy for people to cross. So Allah forgave him all his sins 
and he admitted him to paradise. To be continued, insha'Allah, after we return from a short break. In a couple of minutes, you stay tuned. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back. So today we were talking about the hadith in which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said خير الناس أنفعهم للناس The best of all people are those who uh, offer more or most benefit to others. Those who are more beneficial to others. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in one hadith commanded the following, and the hadith is collected by Bukhari, a Muslim, it's a sound hadith. He said, Man kana fi hajati akhihi, kana Allahu fi hajatih. Whoever is helping one of his brothers, Allah will be in his help. Whoever delivers one of his brothers out of his hardship or difficulty, Allah the Almighty will deliver him out of the hardship of the day of judgment. Whoever conceals the faults of a believer or a Muslim, Allah will conceal his faults for him on the day of judgment. Whoever If a person is oppressed and he's too weak to get and collect his right from the oppressor, but you have the means, you have connections, you have an access. So you decided to help this person. Maybe you don't even know him. But you know that this person is weak. This person is oppressed. So you go in order to support him. And get back his right for him. The Prophet said, if you do so, Allah Almighty will keep firm your feet on the sarat. On the path which you all know that all of us have to cross over hellfire. So some people will cross with the speed of the light, some people will cross running, some people will cross walking, and some people will be shackled down and fall in hell. May Allah protect us against that. The Surat which we invoke Allah the Almighty to guide us to the straight path so that we will be able to access it easily on the Day of Judgment. It is very thin, it is very sharp, but those whom Allah loves, the true believers, will cross safely. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, if you help somebody who's been oppressed until you get back his right for him, Allah the Almighty will keep firm your feet on the path on the day of judgment. He will deliver you out of this hardship. The Prophet ﷺ commanded his companions with seven commands. Iyadatul marid, visiting the sick. You don't have to know that this person, you don't have to know the sick person. Personally, maybe he is one of your neighbors whom you don't know personally, you haven't visited him. One of the colleagues at work or classmates or... So you go and visit a sick person so that you can make dua for him. May Allah cure him. It's a benefit to benefit the sick person with and to benefit yourself, which Allah appreciates. Ittiba'ul janaz. We're told in the masjid that there is a funeral. I don't have to know who died. I don't have to know the person, whether it's he or she. They don't have to be relatives. We all are encouraged to attend the funeral prayer so we can make dua for this person. We ask Allah to accept our intercession for him so that he would receive salvation and he would have peace in his grave and salvation on the day of judgment. Tashmeet al atus You're in the bus, you're in the train, you're in Hajj, you're in Umrah, you're in the classroom. Somebody, I didn't even see him, sneezed. And says, Alhamdulillah, he's Muslim. So I don't have to know this person personally. I should say, Yarhamukallah. May Allah have mercy on you. That is his right upon you. Ibrar al muqsim somebody said, Wallahi, and he asked you to do something. Then you should fulfill the oath that is your duty. Wanasr al mazloom helping the one who's oppressed. Wa ifsha is salam and spreading the greeting of As-Salam, whether you know people or not, in the marketplace. Everybody is Muslim. As-Salamu Alaikum. You don't have to be friends. 
You don't have to be family members or related. Any Muslim is worthy of your greeting. Afshi salam. Ala man alqis salam. Ala man arafta wa man lam ta'arif min al muslimin. This is what the Messenger of Allah said. Greet those whom you know or those whom you do not know of Muslims by the greeting of Assalamu alaikum. Wa ijabat al da'i. And people, they should accept the invitation of others. There is a wulima, there is a feast, there is a aqiqa. Compliment them. Go eat from their food and make dua for them. That will create and maintain love among the Muslim uh, brothers and sisters in the community. It is very lovely to know that al jaza'u min jins al amal. Yani the reward will be of the same nature of the good deed that you've done. You knew that somebody was in dire need for financial help. So you rushed to help him. You give him a loan. Allah the Almighty will deliver you out of your hardship in the dunya and in the hereafter. Now it was time to pay and he is not able to pay. You give him a respite that makes it more worthy for you to be delivered out of the hardship on the day of judgment. And the Prophet ﷺ said, if you give somebody a loan, and he pays it off back. Then he's asking you for another loan and you give it to him again. That is equivalent to giving the same amount in a charity. Even though you will collect your money back. It's just a loan. But it's a goodly loan. So you will be rewarded for it as if you have given him such money in a charity. Walking, taking footsteps. Because you know that somebody needs some help here or there. Each footstep that you take is an act of charity. Even whether you achieve the target, you can help the person or not. And by the way, brothers and sisters in Islam, we don't look at it as you've done somebody a favor. No. Rather, you look at it, thank you so much. You're the one who's done me a favor because you thought good of me. You thought I can help you and I can assist you. And you ask that help from me. Abdullah ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him and his father said, somebody whom I can never compensate him or pay him enough, thank him enough or reward him enough, is a person whom he spent the whole night worried about one of his needs. And he's been thinking, whom shall I ask? Whom shall I go to? Then Allah has guided him to me. So he came to me anticipating that I'm the most befitting person to help him out to fulfill his need. I cannot pay him enough because of his good expectations of me. This is very amazing. It is totally unlike what we think that when people ask us for help, it's like a burden that you put on us and they should give us thanks and gratitude. No. If you're doing so for Allah's sake and anticipating the reward only from Allah, then you are the best of people. خَيْرُ nasi and فَعُهُمْ nas. He said, peace be upon him, in the hadith, which is collected by Imam Muslim, من استطاع منكم أن ينفع أخاه فليفعل He who can afford to benefit any of his brothers, by any mean, let him do so. That's a sound hadith. You knew somebody is sick, so you went to recite ruqya upon him. That's a benefit that you offer him. You don't wait for him or his family to ask you, you know, mashallah, you're a hafiz. We expect that your recitation may benefit the person. You take the initiative. Um, there are some students having the final tomorrow and you are their senior or you are their teacher or you are their neighbor and you can help him to guide them to some very interesting hints so that they pass the exam and score a high score. Do that. The Prophet ﷺ said, among the best deeds ever is it khaluka surur ala mu'min. Making a believer happy. Somebody who is hungry and starving and you give him food to satisfy his hunger, water to satisfy and conquer his thirst. This is indeed the best of deeds as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi You know that he has not bought clothes for his children for the past several years because he's broke. So you come before this classic year begins and you buy school supplies and clothes for this person. You don't have to wait for him or her to ask you. That is the best of deeds or among the best of deeds. أو قضيت له حاجة or fulfilling any of their needs. Brothers and sisters, may Allah guide us to what is best. And inshallah, until next episode, I leave you in the care of Allah. 
والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته